On today's show, I sit with Mark Serkin. Mark is the founder of Dynable, which is the first platform for event planners and hospitality leaders to easily learn how many vegetarians, vegans, or gluten-free guests will be attending their meetings and their events. They're then able to share that information quickly and easily with food service, catering, or restaurants that they're working with. I love his concept. I think it's really cool. And in our conversation, Mark talks about you know his motivation for forming this company, creating Dinable, and what the future of hospitality looks like from a very customized and individual way. Very interesting. I love what he has to say, so check it out. My name is Emmy Kirshner. I'm a serial entrepreneur and investor. The one thing that I get asked all the time is, how do you achieve success in business and make an impact? In each episode of the Tribe of Leaders podcast, you'll hear from entrepreneurs and visionaries who share how their leadership has changed not only their lives, but the lives of everybody around them. Hey, everybody. Emmy Kirshner here. And today I am with Mark Serkin of Dynable. Welcome to the show, Mark. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled to be with you today and I'm looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, same, same. And, you know, I love what you're doing because it's, to me, it's revolutionary, it's evolutionary and so needed, you know, just, I think in the marketplace, but in the world in general. So share with everybody a little bit about you and Dynable's story. Cause I think it's fascinating. Well, thanks. We're having a great time building out this product. You know, it's, it's been a, A lot of fun. This is my first time really building a a new business. I've got a lot of great people helping me out who've been through it before. Mm -hmm. I came to Dynable mostly because I was frustrated. I'm food restricted and I'm tired of talking about it. (laughs) Um, So I looked at all the possible ways to try to help solve this problem. And I'm an IT guy. So when I see a problem I want to solve, I kind of fixate on it. I don't really stop thinking about it. Right. And, uh, you know, just kind of went down this pathway of looking at myself and thinking, okay, well, food really matters to me. Food counts to me. I know food counts to a whole lot of other people. And out there today, people just aren't getting what they want. We're going out and eating out together. And quite often the food is for everybody and nobody. Um, It's often getting thrown in the garbage because everybody's done it. You go to an event, you see these giant trays of pastries, three of them get eaten. 83 of them go in the garbage can at the end of the day. Why were they even put out there? Because nobody wants that anymore. But nobody knows how to serve the right food for this whole group that maybe wants all sorts of different things. So to us, it's all about communication. Right. You know, the future of everything is really hyper-personalization, any kind of consumer business you're looking at. So how do you do that with food? We realize with Dynable that the food profile is a powerful tool to help the world get food right. So that's what we're doing. And that's a little bit about me and why I'm doing it. Yeah, which I think is awesome. Share people too, like, because you said food restricted. So, and I think everybody is more aware of what like they can and cannot eat. And there's a lot of people who are gluten-free or vegan or, you know, not eating whatever it is that they're potentially allergic to. Doesn't it make it more challenging too when you're trying to eat with a group, somebody who is, you know, trying to avoid certain foods? Sure. You know, if you go out with a group and six different people have different needs, where do you go? Yeah. It's 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 tough to figure out where to go. And it's tough for for an operator, food preparer, what whatever the venue is, whether it's a restaurant or a private event, whatever it is, to figure out all right, what kind of menu actually can be efficient and feed all of these people at once. Right. Uh, so if you're doing that off the cuff, people just walk in and say, uh, you know, one person says I'm, I have a peanut allergy. Another one says I'm vegan. Another one says I'm kosher and on and on and on. Then you've got somebody in the kitchen tearing their hair out saying, how do I figure this out and still run business for myself? Right. right. Probably most of the people listening to this podcast are business people in some way. We're all used to setting a meeting agenda. Mm-hmm. Uh, we owe that same kind of respect to people who are serving us food. Right. A meeting agenda makes everything go more smoothly. We're not providing that to the chef. The chef, he or she needs it. And they have something like that. They can serve us more efficiently. Everybody right. gets what they want. So it gives the chef and the meeting planners really more opportunity because they know ahead, right? Mm-hmm. 
So explain how Dynable works. I think that's probably the best thing to... Sure. It's super simple. So Dynable is uh, basically a free personalized food profile that you can share anywhere. The way it works today, um, we've launched it into the market for private events. So let's say you're invited to a conference and you're vegan. Maybe you've got a peanut allergy too. How do you get that information to the conference organizer? Well, with Dynable, the conference organizer can get a unique event link from Dynable. They can take that link and paste it anywhere they want into Eventbrite, into their email, whatever, send it to their guests and say, hey, if you've got food restrictions, click this link to share it with me. Mm -hmm. This takes away the whole problem of free text. If five different people are going to communicate gluten-free five different ways, the operator then has problems really translating that, figuring out what somebody can eat and can't eat. So with the Dynable profile, you build it once. You share it over and over again, you click that link, you share your profile, and they've got what they need to to get food right for you. That's so cool. So it really is about the like event planners or you know, corporation having access to their unique or getting the unique link and then sending it to their people, right? Right. So they get the link, they send it out to people, people click on it, they share their profile, and then Dynable aggregates everybody's profile in the background spits out a report to the operator, to the event planner uh-huh. uh, that combines everything. So they've basically got a tally and then they just have to run down the tally, cross things off, build out their menu. Maybe five or six people on an event need special plates because there's a severe allergy or something like that, but they can plan ahead now. Uh, and it just makes it that much easier. So from an operational standpoint, it makes everything in the kitchen go more smoothly. Right. Any chef or any, any server at a restaurant will tell you, Or, you know, catering kitchen will tell you that advance notice is key. Mm -hmm. If they don't have it, they're running around trying to catch up. If they do have it, it's like anything else in their business. They're ready for it. It's just part of the day. Right. So it's easier. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And is it possible for like the consumer to just have this profile on their phone? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So Dynamo is like, just like LinkedIn in a lot of ways. Uh, You've got your LinkedIn profile, you update it when you get a new job or when you move around, you've got something new, you maintain it, and then you share it wherever you want. Dynable profile works just the same way. You build it once, you maintain it, you share it wherever you want. Uh, In fact, we're we're actually launching some new functionality in the next couple of weeks that drives that ahead even further. And we'll let you just get your profile and share a link to anybody. Okay. Uh, So they can click on it and view it anytime they want. Right. So we, a lot of times we just say we're LinkedIn for what you eat. Oh, perfect. I love the tagline. <laughs> That's super cool. LinkedIn for what you eat is perfect. So why would somebody use Dynable too? Like outside of, let's say they're gluten-free or they're kosher or vegan or something. And outside of it being operationally easier from a consumer standpoint, let's say they've got their, you know, their profile, they're kind of using it like the, you know, LinkedIn for what they eat. It, does it make it easier for the consumer? Uh, well, the ease for the consumer is just a, a time saver. And it's, it's kind of, uh, if you're food restricted in any way, you've done this many times, you've had this conversation over and over again, you're tired of wasting time and starting each meal with, here's a bunch of personal information about me. Right. Uh, now feed me. Uh, <laughs> it can be isolating. Yeah. It can be, uh, for a lot of people, in fact, it can be really socially isolating for them right. because people make decisions about where to go and what to do right. based on, well, I'm not going to be able to eat anything here, or I'm going to show up here and they're going to serve me food that could send me to the hospital. So people just don't show up. So the value to the consumer is, I think, really powerful because mm-hmm. number one, it saves you time in having the conversation over and over again. Right. Number two, you don't have to be singled out anymore. You just share, you have that conversation on your smartphone in your pocket instead of at the table in front of everybody. You don't have to be the center of attention. You don't have to be defined by your milk allergy or the fact that you're vegan or paleo or kosher. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to define you. It can just be part of who you are. It doesn't have to be central to your, the way you're introduced to other people. Right. Right. Well, I think too, I mean, there's some people who it's like, well, I'll just eat this thing, even though it's going to make me sick because I don't want to be a bother. And and so it gives people that ease to have all that stuff taken care of ahead of time. Sure. Well, I could get my hand slapped a little bit for saying the word healthcare, 
but we all know that food is medicine. Dynable is not a healthcare company, but there is certainly incredible potential for the utility of a food profile to have an effect on how people are eating on a large scale. If it's easier to stick to your diet, it's easier to stay healthy. I'm going to stop right there or. uh, (laughs) So to me, like your concept is visionary and I'd love to hear a little bit, you know, about how like you initially started the idea of this outside of I'm sick and tired of talking about what I can't, I can't eat because you're, you know, you are on a restricted diet right now and where you see this growing. Sure. So uh, to me, I started thinking about this by thinking about menus. I would go out all the time and I'd look at a menu and I'd think, well, I basically know how this is cooked. Can't they just substitute this for this? Or why am I looking at all these, looking through all these things that I probably can't have when really I just want to see the five or six things I could have. So I wanted to see a menu for me, not just a menu for anybody. Uh, And I thought, okay, that sounds like a business. Let me see what I can do with that. Nobody wants to put all that data into a computer system. The simple reason why we're not talking about menus in, what, uh, instead of food profiles. Right. There's certainly a path to that. And I think that any future that you look at in the hospitality world will involve everybody showing up to a restaurant or to a private event or whatever it is and having their own personalized menu mm-hmm. filtered based on what their needs are. The only way to get there is a food profile. So we're working on food profiles now, but the future here is really about hyper-personalization of meals, of menus, of the entire dining out experience, no matter where you are. Okay. I forgot to silence my phone, sorry. No worries, we're all about real life. So with the food profiles and that becoming more mainstream, how do you see yourself impacting the hospitality industry? Well, I get a a lot of experiences to talk to leaders in hospitality, which is an incredible privilege of the work that I'm doing. When I share Dynable with them, they take the words of what the vision is right out of my mouth. For example, a couple of weeks ago, met with somebody who's a a leading event planner, and we gave her the very simple, you know, three-sentence Dynable pitch, and she said, well, that's really cool. Do you mean to tell me that in five years... I can sit in my living room and say, Alexa, share my food profile for the Johnson wedding and share it with my American Airlines ticket, share it with the hotel where I'm going. And because I've done that, just that simple uh, task of sharing it verbally through Alexa, I'll get food right for me everywhere I go. And we said, yeah, you're hired. (laughs) (laughs) And I hear that frequently. And we we talked to a sales executive for a food service or a food packaged food conglomerate. Right. There's going to be 300 million food profiles in this country in 10 years. Uh, And we said, great, you're hired. You know, I don't have to go very far to, to share this vision because hospitality leaders have the same vision. Okay. Create personalization. They know that that's the next step. They know that technology needs to be leveraged to do that. Right. Uh, And there's no way to personalize a meal for anybody if you don't have data about them. Uh, and that's what the food profile does. Okay. I guess I should say, of of course, with any kind of data, you've got to respect the user's ownership of it. And we've designed that with, with the individual in mind. Right. Uh, so there's a lot of privacy yeah. set up. Okay, cool. Yeah. And how is this like just growing Dynable, doing the work on the back end? Because this has been your project in growing the company and getting it to market for the last couple of years. How has it helped you step into a leadership role? That's a great question. Well, it's helped me learn what leadership is. I've never been in a role like this before. I've done other, I've I've been a manager before. I know I've had people look up to me as a leader before, but I've never really officially been in a leadership role. So this has been a great kind of personal growth exercise for me to learn what it really means to I guess I'll say put put people on a right on, on the path you want them to be on mm-hmm. without controlling them. Right. And there's a real art to that. And it's it's been a great thing to learn how to do it. My so my, my my mother's a, a psychologist. She's a child psychologist and my dad's a lawyer, so I guess it makes sense that I'm doing something like this mm-hmm. because it's all about people and rules all at the same time. You know, it's it's just been a lot of fun getting a great team around me and inspiring yeah. them. 
and then getting out of their way. <laughs> well, I think that's like really important is like not micromanaging everybody so that they can, they can succeed. Mm. What's one thing that you've learned or had to like been challenged with like you had to overcome? Well, I think, well, I'll say something to kind of set the stage for that first. I think anybody has the capacity to be a leader, whatever age they are. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one thing that I had to learn before being able to step into the role myself. That's, uh, you know, I can look at my four-year-old nephew and he's a leader just because he's himself. He mostly respects other people as well as a four-year-old can. And he goes after what he wants. Right. Uh, my grandmother is 97 years old. She's been a leader her whole life for basically the same reason. Anybody, any age, any situation can be a leader. But when you make it official and when you, whether you're elected to office or whether you start a company or become a celebrity, mm-hmm. whatever it is, all of a sudden it becomes official. And you have to be able to put clarity around what you're leading people towards and what you're trying to influence them to do without controlling them. Right. Uh, and that's a fine line. I had the opportunity to run the IT department for a retirement community for a couple of years. And while working there, I learned a lot about being patient and letting people do what they want while still trying to influence them towards the right choice. Because, you know, people get older, their health starts to fail, their mental capabilities start to go downhill, but they still don't want to be controlled. Right. So learning how to help people without controlling them is a really fine art, something that I think I'll be learning the rest of my life. And I think it's a a really important part of leadership. Awesome. And you know what? I love that perspective because I think it gives people and gives you the opportunity to really bring the best out of people. And you're looking at them individually and not just lumping them into like a mass generality. Yeah, absolutely. I, I got a piece of advice from, he actually wasn't a very good boss, but he gave me a very good piece of advice. Okay. Which was whenever you're working on a problem with okay. somebody, make the make the solution our solution, not your solution. Make the person you're working with to help part of the solution and everything goes better. If they're just a, a variable in the solution you're working on, they're going to feel controlled and you're going to lose them. Awesome. You know, I love that because it's really about team. At some yeah. Level. yeah, absolutely. It always comes back to building a team, whether it's a temporary team or a team you intend to have for a long time. Right. Right. It's amazing. This has been so incredible. How could somebody like get to know you better? And is it possible for them to access Dynable now? Absolutely. Go to Dynable.com. There's plenty of links on the page to sign up depending on how you want to sign up and who you are. Uh-huh. So Dynable.com. Check it out. If you're running an event, please use us. It's the easy way to ask and answer the question. Uh, do you have any food restrictions? Right. Which is just, uh, you know, a, a simple thing that everybody should be asking these days. Yeah, no, I totally agree because there's so many people who, who have food restrictions as we talked about. So it's incredible. One last question. And I'm going to put you a little bit on the spot because you already gave us one amazing quote. So any other quote that you could just pop into that's like your go-to mantra or something that you love that is meaningful for you? Yes. I'm going to crib it from something else. It's not my quote, but I'm going to say it because I believe in it really strongly. I got an email recently from a vendor that we use. I won't say the vendor's name because I don't necessarily have permission to do that. But a really simple little thing that really inspired me to consider these variables every time that I'm doing any work. And it just said, we always strive to be remarkable, reliable, and always helpful. And I think There's no better way to go about business and go about life than thinking about those three things. No, I think that's incredible and and accurate too. So thank you for sharing that. And thank you for being here. It's been awesome. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, and again, everybody, please check out Mark's website, dinable.com, set up your food profile and let people know in advance, right? You could, I think that's the, such a simple, brilliant concept. <laughs> I yeah, guess share, really- share your food profile and get food right for you. Yeah. We, awesome. we, we so, help, we're here to help get food right for you. Yeah. So thank you so much. And everybody, we will see you next time. Thanks, Amy. 
as an entrepreneur, do you ever feel isolated, like you're just grinding away and not getting to the place or reaching the goals that you want? Maybe you've realized that you just spent days, weeks, or even months trying to accomplish something only to figure out that the answer that you have would have saved you all of that time. I know I've had that experience and my clients have as well. And that's why I created the Tribe of Leaders Biz School. Get the accountability, the training, and the knowledge base in a community of like-minded people who are there to support you. Go ahead and check it out. It's thetribeofleaders.com. 